untold stories. Welcome back to Friday right here on TV 47. Tonight I host Farah Ismail, a lawyer, bodybuilder and brand ambassador for Ultimate Sports Nutrition and Aquamist. Now she is with us in studio and fitness is definitely her passion. Thank you so much for being on Friday, Farah. Thank you so much. I can't think of a better way to spend my Friday evening with you. Amazing. Now, my first question to you, is bodybuilding an expensive sport? Yes, a super expensive sport. And right now there's really no government funding in it, so it's all really self-funded. Um, there's so many elements of it. You've got to have the eating clean, which surprisingly costs more than actually eating KFC. Um, you have to have a gym membership. You have to basically hire a coach that's going to guide you. And that's all about getting to the show. Um, the rest of the expense is actually in getting to the show in terms of travel, accommodations, having the bling bling bikini that you need to have as a bikini yeah. fitness athlete, the yeah. shoes, the jewelry. I mean, it's, it's a really expensive sport. I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. And it's not just for everyone, right? Well, you know, I think um, there's ways around it and you get sponsorships. So I have had some sponsorships and okay. the benefit of that. Um, but really, it has been self-funded. I haven't received any money from the government to do what I do. And I have represented Kenya. Mm -hmm. Now, you do have a bachelor's degree in environmental science. You also have an MBA. You're a lawyer and consultant. So how do you juggle between that and bodybuilding? So initially it wasn't a juggle. I've grown up where um, I've always had this part of my life where I have used my brain, get tired and then go, you know, exhaust my body and then I just like rest really well. So I've always had two parts to my, my lifestyle. And, um, but really as you get into professional life, it's really, really busy to manage both. But I, I really structure my life so that it is like in a business, you structure everything, you plan it, you put all the, um, everything in place so that you don't fail in the same way I you know take care of my meals I structure my workouts like an appointment and so when you put the structures in place it allows you to do both I treat it like a business even mm -hmm. though it's my passion mm -hmm. and when did you first discover your passion in fitness especially bikini fitness ah, and bodybuilding <laughs> and bodybuilding exactly so I, I actually went to a show in the US I'd always seen men um, compete we all know about Arnold and we know about all these men on stage and I'd never seen women compete till I went to the show in the US and I was just like blown away by what I saw on stage was this confidence this beauty and it wasn't really these women that would fly away in the wind they were strong and, and beautiful. They were toned they were as well. toned yeah. and, you know, very confident. It was just the confidence of these women on stage. Mm -hmm. And so that stuck with me. And that was really something that um, I, I looked at doing one day. And I started that in 2014 was when the day came that I actually put on a list. I'm going to try a show. I'm going to go try and compete in a show. And, and I was hooked. And it was, you know, I've been doing it since 2014. Mm -hmm. And tell us about that show. When was your first international competition. Yeah, so you know, I, I, I always say I happened to start bodybuilding and the timing was right. They just happened to be a local show in 2014, uh, Musclemania Africa. That was my very first show and there were like, you know, three women on stage. It was a very small sport in the country. And um, the next year I ventured out into big environment in Dubai and I, had, I didn't have any idea what I was getting into. Um, you know, coming from a stage where there were three women, I opened the elevator doors to the registration for this show and there were like hundreds of competitors and I, I was like, oh my God, what have I got myself into? Mm -hmm. And right away, I hadn't really had enough experience, but you know, I went out there to challenge myself and um, you know, I had to kind of quickly learn what it takes to be an international competitor. Um, the tanning, like in Kenya, I didn't even know where to go get a tan, but I had to get spray tanned. I was on a much larger stage. There were a lot more athletes and um, it was super competitive. Everything that could have gone wrong went wrong in that show. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I spilled water all over my tan because I'd never had a tan oh, before. Um, wow. So, you know, that happened. My makeup artist was late. I lost my phone. I mean, everything was going wrong. And I think it was um, when you, you grow through those experiences because, you know, now when I go to a show, I, I take it all in stride. Anything can go wrong. And as an athlete, even when I ran marathons, you know, you can never prepare for the day. Of course. Um, when you get there. Of course. So, yeah. 
Tell me more about um, your background in bodybuilding. What titles have you won? And what has been your greatest moment in the sport? So I've competed locally and internationally, and locally I'm probably the only Kenyan right now who holds three um, times Miss Kenya Bodybuilding and Bikini Fitness, and um, Miss Nairobi for a few years, and then I have one in Dubai in my category. I've competed at the Arnold's, brought back two medals for Kenya, and um, competed internationally in, du in Dubai, as we mentioned, in India, in Las Vegas, where I came top 10 in a very, very competitive show. Mm -hmm. And Tell us um, about that, by the way. How was it? How was your experience? Well, actually, that was like probably the most exciting experience because it was in Vegas. It was the week before the Olympia, which is like the Olympics for bodybuilding. Mm -hmm. And usually I wake up in Kenya at three in the morning to watch these. These are like the number one in the world. That's the top bikini athlete. And she sets the tone for the rest of the competitors for the rest of the year. So you really want to see what is the standard. And, and, and the sport is changing, the physique changes. I mean, where it started in 2014 and, and what they were looking for. And even in the federations, I've actually changed federation um, from when I first started. Okay. And the requirements for what a bikini athlete is constantly changing. Mm -hmm. So that show was great because I was actually able to do my amateur Olympia, um, win top 10 with a whole bunch of athletes. There were like 300 athletes and then really stay on for the Olympia and be there live. And it was a really special moment yeah, and, and yeah. you know, unforgettable. It was just amazing. Were you the only East African there? Oh, yes. Th there were other, other really? Oh, no, no. I'm usually the only East African in most of the shows and probably the only Indian at most of the shows mm -hmm. and probably only Kenyan at most of the shows, yeah. Let's talk about that. You, of course, you mentioned you are a Miss Kenya fitness model and also being Asian, you have dealt with cultural issues, not only here, but abroad. Tell us about those experiences. So, so it's interesting because, you know, I'm in the gym and then when you're on stage, the only way that the judges can see you is if you're in a swimsuit. I mean, how else are they going to see your muscle? So, um, it, it, it's about understanding that it's a sport and it's not about um, women taking their clothes off for entertainment. This is actually a sport. Of course, of course. And so, um, yeah, it's been interesting because um, culturally, as a Muslim as well, um, being on stage in a bikini, it, you know, is probably not one of the things you'd expect me to do. And um, and even in Kenya, so you know, when when I first started, there was not many women in the, in the sport because again, the fear of being on stage in a bikini and what people would say, and that's the same thing in in you know whether it's East Indian or Kikuyu or whatever family you're in. When we grew mm -hmm. up in these cultures, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, they're quite traditional. But realistically, I've had to push through those stereotypes, and and you know, if you don't like what I'm doing, you know, don't watch me. Um, yeah. But it's the only way. It is a sport, and the only way you're going to see my muscles and judge whether I've got the balance and the symmetry, which is what the judges are looking for, mm -hmm. is seeing me in a in a bikini. And and it is interesting because I am quite conscious, like most people at the beach, running around yeah. in a bikini. But yeah. when I'm out on the stage and I'm uh, in a sport competing, it's a different mindset. You know, I, I'm, I'm actually competing in a sport. Mm -hmm. Tell us about your training. How does it look like? How many days a week and do you work out? And what do you do exactly when you're in the gym? So for me, bodybuilding is actually, is now translated into a lifestyle. So um, in terms of number of shows I now do, because it's not very easy to access shows here, so I usually have to travel to the US or Dubai, um, there are a few and a far numbered local shows that I can go to to win a pro card, which is still where I'm go trying to go. And so I basically am off season or on season, and right now I do two shows a year probably. So when I'm on season, and that is preparing for a show, that's like 12 to 16 weeks. And in that time, um, I'm working towards the goal of losing a pound a week towards getting to, sto um, to stage weight and looking right for stage and so that does take me 12 to 16 weeks because I'm usually about 115 pounds on stage mm -hmm. and um, so when I'm doing that I'm really on a seven-day workout um, I'm usually doing anywhere from in the beginning of my prep 30 minutes to towards the end of my prep an hour of cardio 
And then I work on a very traditional bodybuilding split where I do a different part, body part each day of weight. So my, combina my workout is a combination of cardio, which loses, which you, which you use to burn the fat, and then the, the weight lifting, which is actually for the muscle. And it's a combination of the two. It's a very fine balance. You can't over cardio or you're going to lose your muscle. Yeah. And I usually split the cardio and the um, weight lifting. So I'll do cardio in the morning and weights in the evening. Mm -hmm. When I'm off season, it's less cardio. So right now I'm off season. I just finished a show um, in Portugal in early May. So I'm now relaxed, you know, eating a little bit more normally. When I say that, it's still controllable because, you know, I don't want to go too far away to where I need to go back to get back on stage, which I'm hoping to be back in October. Yeah. So it's really, um, the workouts are year long, really. It's, it's just less intense right now, but I'm always building towards that vision of what I need to look like on stage based on, as I said, which, which is the look of the female bodybuilder right now. Of course. And tell us about your diet, because I'm sure a diet is very, very important. So how do you, like, what do you eat? A lot of salads? I'm sure everyone says, <laughs> do you eat a lot of salads or just water? How, how no, do you do it, Farah? Actually, you know, it, it's really interesting. I eat a lot. I eat more than a lot of the men I hang out with and a lot of people I, that I, I eat six times a day. But it's really about what I eat. It's the fuel. You, look, you have to look at your food as your fuel for your body. So I don't eat anything in packages. So everything is, is real food, it's not processed. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing I eat processed probably are rice cakes in, in my show, I'm not gonna usually have them. So really my diet is, it's not very interesting. I eat the same thing all the time. Um, but I'm having egg whites, I'm having um, oatmeal for breakfast and egg whites. I have a little bit of berries. And then it's really chicken, um, sweet potato, brown rice, and then chicken, sweet potato, brown rice, and mostly green vegetables is what I stay with. So zucchini, um, asparagus, and anything green. And that's, I eat that all the time. So I, I have a very consistent diet. And, and it, like I said, it's is a structure. Is it like very little or is it like a, a big portion um, of the plate? I'm eating small portions. So I'm okay. having, you know, probably like 120 grams of chicken, a cup of um, green vegetables, and then, you know, about a little scoop of um, carbs, so like 80 grams of sweet potato. So it's not big portions, but it's it's a philosophy of constantly fueling your metabolism and giving your body the, the nutrients it needs so it doesn't start catabolizing your own muscles. So basically, I think there's this whole thing when, when women want to diet where they just stop eating. And the problem is it eats into your muscles and your, your metabolism slows down as well. And in doing that, you're just gonna start gaining fat. So the science behind it is eating small, small meals. It's um, feeding yourself good nutrients, it's fuel. It's like you know, in a car, you're gonna put the yes. right fuel. You're not gonna put the fuel that's gonna make you feel bad and not operate well. And then it's really about um, always being prepared. So I prepare my meals myself, which means when I'm starving, which I don't because I constantly eat, but the problem that we get into, and I used to eat this way, is you know I wouldn't eat breakfast. Um, this is before I got into bodybuilding. And then I'd have like a salad for lunch because I was trying to diet. And then and I'd smoothies? have- smoothies? Did you have a lot of smoothies? I had smoothies, but you know, that's a lot of calories you're having okay. in, in smoothies. And then I would have like a massive meal because I was starving, but because I'd been at work all day, I'd get takeout. I didn't know what I was eating. So I've changed my lifestyle from eating that way to now, preparing my meals mm -hmm. and um, in doing so I always have them ready like if you see me and most of my friends see me I'm carrying around my Tupperwares and yes. I, I, yes. I, I, I'm always ready with my meals they're always prepared I always know what I'm eating and one of the things I'm going to be launching actually is a meal prep company because I want to oh, wow. share that as well with people on, on how to do that because we lead really really busy lifestyles and so it's all about convenience but if you prepare your meals, it's about preparing convenient meals so it, it goes with your lifestyle, which mm -hmm. is what works for me. So like I said earlier, I've created a structure that works for me and, and it's about being prepared. It's putting in place the systems that won't make you fail as you do this. Um, so people should structure as well what they feel is good for them and not to emulate what you're doing. Right, so you know, each of us is individual. We yeah. all have different bodies. Um, some of us might actually like a lot of carbs, some may not. So I'd actually done some genetic testing when I was in South Africa, and, and I think you can do it here as well, to understand what, what foods your body likes, what it doesn't like. And there's many of these. I mean, mm -hmm. you do have to learn your body and what works for you. I know for me, I have to take some carbs. And as you get older as a woman, you do need carbs. So no, I've done these fad diets. I've done the keto diets where there's like no carbs. But for women's hormones, we do need to have some carbs for healthy lifestyle. 
and I feel that I operate much better. And just as a bodybuilder, I need carbs so that my muscles are fueled and look yeah. full. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, what works for me doesn't work for everyone, but there is kind of a middle, middle di dietary plan that most people can get on and live healthily, which is, some protein at every meal. You want to have some vegetables at every meal and you want to have a little bit of carbs. And if you spread that out, um, you know, so if you go and have a whole plate of pasta, that's not exactly healthy because you just focused on the carbs. Yes. Um, so it's about really, when I look at it, it's about consciousness. You got to be conscious in your eating, conscious in your lifestyle. And, and sometimes it's about trade-offs. So if I'm going out and I know I don't drink very much anymore because again, you know, I spend so much time trying to be healthy that if I'm having alcohol, your liver's first processing the alcohol. Mm -hmm. So in doing that, um, sometimes it's a trade-off. If I'm going to have a glass of wine, I'm not going to have dessert. And it's just yeah. about yeah. Balance. making balancing yeah. your and not, not going overboard. So a lot of the problem we have is people are unconscious when they're eating around people and family and you just eat. I mean, family and friends is all about eating and drinking, but if you're unconsciously doing it, you just don't know what you're putting into your body. So I think it's just about gaining consciousness mm -hmm. um, and, and, and putting that in place. And quick one, and with that, do you believe in supplements as well? Uh, yeah, and I should say that because I am I am sponsored by USN, which is a supplement company, but not just because but it of that. has an advantage and disadvantage. Yeah, right? so supplements are exactly what they are. They're supplemental. So, um, you know, in our the way we live and how we get groceries and, and vegetables at the supermarket, we lose a lot of the nutrients there. Um, sometimes it's about absorption. Our body might not be absorbing those nutrients. Um, sometimes it's it's com combinations, even from food. If you're eating a certain food, do you, com do you take all the nutrients? So supplements are really a way to enhance um, what you're already doing. Uh, there's a lot of people who will take everything from their food and won't have supplements. Yeah. Um, but for instance, vitamin D is a supplement that I take and um, even with dark skin, we don't absorb enough vitamin D from the sun. If I am, if I sat there for like three hours, mm -hmm. um, so supplementing with vitamin D is important, and um, especially right now with COVID, D vitamin. Um, looking at vitamin C right now with everything going on, you know, with the flu season and COVID, and then also essential fatty acids, which are really important. So those are like three fundamental ones that I would say right now to be taking. Um, I take zinc magnesium for recovery at night. Now as an athlete, I'll be taking a lot more. Like I'll be taking CLA, which helps with the fat mobilization. And I take creatine for working out. Look, now everyone needs to take this stuff. We're not all yeah. bodybuilders. Yeah. But I think there's basic supplements that one should look at. Calcium as women get older, um, so we don't develop osteoporosis. So um, there's definitely some basics. And really where supplements are going, which is a very interesting place, but it's quite expensive is personalizing it so you know you can the same way I told you I got a DNA test you can mm -hmm. actually run a test to see what supplements you're lacking and what you have too much so if okay. I go to the shelf and I get like the standard supplement for everyone um, it might actually throw my supplementation over like if I already have too much vitamin D and this so the world of supplements and and um, healthcare and nutrition and fitness is it, it really is about learning about yourself and yeah. what works well for you yes uh, away from that, Farah, what hobbies and interests do you have to balance out your life? Because you're always in the gym. So do you that's like a great place, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a great hobby. Uh, do you like surfing or running or enjoying yourself in the beach, having a, a cocktail? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, a tiny uh, little I, bit of cocktail. Uh, a tiny bit of cocktail is good. Tiny bit. Um, look, I, I really like to go out, meet people. I love to travel. So I've just come back from traveling um, in Europe and in in Mexico. And I love salsa dancing, I love rock climbing. Look, I, I, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie, so I like, and I like challenges and I like trying new things. So I've tried every sport under the sun, really. I mean, I've played field hockey, squash, I've gone rollerblading, crashed into fences doing that. Mm -hmm. I've tried skiing, I'm not a very good skier, but I try. I try a lot of new things. And I think that's one thing is, is you get to learn what you like. And, and you know, when I tried bodybuilding, I just fell in love with it. It's also really sustainable as we get older and as women, we start losing muscle. So I'm finding it's actually the fountain of youth for me is yeah. what I'm finding bodybuilding because yeah. Yeah. It's, it's really helping me and it helps me focus. Um, and, and so I think a lot of it is people say, how do you stay motivated and how do you do all of that? But it's actually, 
Um, once I've set the framework, as I've talked about, and, and set the structures so that I don't fail, it actually helps my mindset. Mm -hmm. And I've recently had a lot of conversations with people who have adopted this wellness lifestyle. And they just said it, they've grown up, it's helped them change, it's helped their, their mindset. Yeah. So, you know, it's, it's a chicken egg, you know, does the mindset come first to develop the habit or does the habit get you the mindset? And, and you know, I think it goes both ways. It, mm -hmm. it's, it, it is, so not everyone has to be a bodybuilder, but I think taking on the, the lifestyle of wellness and fitness, which you need to do as a bodybuilder, I think is really helpful. Mm -hmm. And speaking of champions, who do you admire in the world of bodybuilding and fitness and why? Uh, okay, well, look, there's a lot of people who are doing amazing things and, you know, a lot of bikini athletes. Why? I guess, I mean, this sounds like <laughs> there's so many to pick for, but I would really pick Arnold. Your favorite too? I think I'd say Arnold is my favorite. The reason why I pick Arnold is because he's a, a master of redesign, a little bit like myself. So look, you've got to stay relevant in the sport. Arnold has stayed relevant in the sport and, and why he's so interesting is, you know, it got him to a place where he could then get into the movies. I mean, his story is phenomenal. He was told he could never do that. Um, you know, he got into politics. And what he's now done is with the Arnold um, competitions that he's opened across on every continent, he's mm -hmm. really spreading wellness and fitness. And his, his shows are not only about bodybuilding, they're about different sports. And, and so to be able to do that and be such a great ambassador for the sport, I, yeah. I really, really admire him. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, he's an internationally known person. I mean, he's got that brand. And, and so for me to be able to accomplish like that, so when you look at who do you admire, it's somebody that you, know, you wanna aspire to. Yeah. So for me to be an ambassador for the, for the, for the sport, as little or as much as I can be, um, to the level that he's been would be amazing. Mm -hmm. Any Kenyan bodybuilder in mind? Any Kenyan bodybuilder in mind? Well, look, I think the sport, we need to grow a lot more, the sport, okay. and have a lot more support. We haven't made it to the Olympia stage yet, and that's where we need to be going, and we need a lot more support from the government and the Ministry of Sports to really push it. From a genetics, we have great genetics in this country without any of the steroids or you know, even supplements. And our natural diet is a terrific diet to enable bodybuilders, mm -hmm. and, and so, um, I think there will be in the future, and right yeah. now, um, do, do we have do we have enough female bodybuilders? Because bodybuilding yeah. is generally a, a man's sport. Oh yes, so, yes. So how is it? How is the bodybuilding sport now compared to five, ten years ago? Oh, it's great. So okay. really, I think when I started. As I said, it was a timing situation. We just got a new federation in for the KBBF, and now it's a bit of a. It needs to be reconstructed. It's kind of fallen apart, but at the time. The new federation came in, there was actually a stage for women and I was really lucky as I started that we had Miss Kenya, Miss Nairobi, which no longer is, is, is in existence. Mm -hmm. and, um, and now there are some local shows and yeah, you know, we have like 20, 30 women who are competing, which is amazing. We do have some women now going internationally. You know, my first international show was in 20, 2015 um, and we now have a lot of competitors going out. So, you know, we've opened amazing. the doors. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think we're getting a lot more women going out and, and it's great. It's really, really great to see because um, it was a very, very unknown sport when I, when I started here. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. And what is something about bodybuilding you know now that you wish you knew when you started? Yeah, I think it's, it's, it's like you need to make it a lifestyle. And um, along the way, you lose some friends because, you know, like you start staying You're so around. You're busy building. You're busy building, yeah. but you also, let's be honest, like, you know, the Kenyan lifestyle is about drinking and yamachoma and, <laughs> and eating partying. and yeah, partying. Yeah, very true. Very and, true. Uh, look, I, I love to do that, but sometimes it's really hard to do that because I'm living more of a wellness lifestyle. So I think, uh, you know, as I said, prior to bodybuilding, I didn't have that lifestyle, but I've had to adopt it. So I think before bodybuilding, I didn't know it would become part of my life, but it has, and I'm very grateful for that. And no regrets? No regrets. I absolutely love my new life mm -hmm. and, and the platform it's given me and, and you know the ability to go to other countries, meet other competitors. 
um, be part of this community. And it's not all glorified. I mean, bodybuilding, there are negative elements to it. You know, we are seeing a lot of bodybuilders who take it to the extreme. We are seeing some deaths in the sport because of some of the steroids and all of that. So look, there are sides of it, but if you can do it in a healthy, natural way, yeah. and if you can do it in a way that, it, you know, you, you're conscious. So I think any, anything I say, you really have to be conscious mm -hmm. um, about where you're going, what the goals are, what you're willing to trade off and balance and, 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 and how to do it. Mm -hmm. So um, done in a healthy way, while it can be obsessive, some people will call me obsessive, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but it's healthy obsession. Mm -hmm. And what would you like to achieve in fitness and bodybuilding long term? Well, I'd love to be on stage in my 80s and 90s. I mean, that would be wonderful. Um, and we talked about, you know, with Arnold, it's about being relevant and being able to, to last longer. So what happens is, if you don't do this in a healthy way, you're gonna burn out, you're gonna not be able to go be there in the long run. So I'd like to be there in my 80s. I'm trying to get my pro card and I'd like to be able to get that as well. So that's something I'm working on. Mm -hmm. And and to really share it with people. I mean, this is something that I'm really passionate about. I'm, I'm really wanting to help people get there. Um, a lot of it is, you know, getting, there's a lot of people who come up to me and say, you know, can you help me? But when I say, okay, put together a seven day plan, they just fail at doing that. So it's about, yeah. um, trying to, in a way, motivate people to see this as something that's really important to mm -hmm. do. Mm -hmm. And I think we've seen that in COVID, and um, we've realized that health comes first. It comes yeah. before everything else, really. Yeah. And lastly, Farah, what advice do you have for the young women and men who want to attain their fitness goals and also bodybuilding as a sport? So, yeah, like we said, you know, there's fitness, generally wellness, and then there's bodybuilding. Um, it's about balance also of mind, body, and soul. You can't have one thing. So, you know, you're not gonna be able to do just, um, you know, just go to be fit and drop everything and not have a job and all you do is spend hours in the gym. You need to have a balance with your work because you need to probably pay for that. Yeah. Um, and then also like the soul, the spirituality, mindfulness. I talked about consciousness. That's an element of mindfulness. So it's about balance and balance in life. And um, in terms of getting into the sport, look, you got to try it if you are interested. There's a lot more people now doing it. There's a lot on, on Instagram and YouTube. And um, it's about just taking that step and trying it. You know, I wouldn't have, you know, if I hadn't done that show in 2014, I, I would never have gotten to the sport and mm -hmm. I absolutely love it. Mm -hmm. So it's really about just, you know, as Nike says, just do it. That's been my, you know, my favorite, one of my favorite brands, although I'm wearing Adidas today. Okay. Um, <laughs> So, You're looking really nice, actually. Thank you very lovely, much. Lovely, lovely. So, um, yeah, I think it's just, you know, go do it. Find somebody to walk you through. I'm happy if you want to reach out to me. Um, Farah.ismile on Instagram. You know, give me a DM. And I'm happy to sit down and then talk to you and, and see if I can put you on that path. So I have coached some athletes. I did start taking my certification in, in coaching for bodybuilding mm -hmm. um, during COVID. And uh, so it's, it's an area that I'm passionate about and I'd love to share it with people. Mm -hmm. And you also have to find the right coach. So what, the other thing is, um, you know, it's, it's a chemistry thing with your coach. So I may not be the right coach or I might be the right coach. And you have to look around for who's going to be that person to take you where you need to go. Mm -hmm. And just a quick one, your camera is right there. I'm sure there's a very young girl, yeah. you know, who loves you so much and wants to be like Farah. So what would you tell her very quickly? Your camera is right there. I tell her, reach for your dreams, you know, go do it. And um, there's no failing. There's nothing like, you know, you're going to fail. If you don't try, just step out of your comfort zone. I do that all the time when I'm on stage. It's not easy being on stage in a bikini. But you just got to try it. And, and that's where you're going to grow. And there's nothing like failing, you know. And you said that they can find you on Instagram. Are you on Twitter? Are you on Facebook as well? Facebook, Twitter, I don't use it as much. But yeah, Facebook, Instagram, come look for me there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Farah. Thank it's been you. a pleasure. And we wish you all the best in your endeavors. Thank you. And of course, you did mention about your, um, was it a food program you're doing or yes, a diet? Yes, a meal prep program. A meal yes, prep. Yes. Very quickly, tell us about that. So I'm trying to bring out into the public what I already do and the way I eat and, and what I trust. Because again, okay. it's about clean eating, knowing where I'm getting everything from. So Coco Meals, I'm going to be launching that. Coco Meals. Coco Meals. Okay. And uh, so basically bringing you what I've been doing, you mm -hmm. know, and, and what, how I've got by. So you'll be selling like little packages yes. of, of diet uh, yes. foods for just for athletes or, or no, just anyone actually, in the gym? Anyone in the gym, really. I'm not tailoring it yet to athletes. I just want to get 
generally people into the the routine and the rhythm of eating clean and and okay. uh, and doing it in a way that's easily accessible mm -hmm. and they can find it also on instagram yes okay thank you so much farah and of course thank you for watching friday every friday right here on tv 47 the home of untold stories this has been farah ismail in case you want to you know catch the repeat we're on Facebook and Twitter at TV47 Kenya. Hold on, I have a gift oh. for you. Oh, okay. Okay, can we, can we okay. get assistance on the, the gifts? gifts? I love gifts. I love, I love, I love, I love, I love gifts. Ah, oh, yes, please. Oh, thank you so... so as oh. a sponsored athlete, it gives me ability to give you some things. Thank um, you. So compliments of USN. Oh, wow. Who is my supplement sponsor. Oh my God, I love this. To keep you hydrated. Oh, I love this. And um, awesome. we have some bars for when you finish your show today. And uh, energy oats, banana fudge. Oh, these are really nice. Berry yogurt. Oh, yep. Yummy. These are 0%. Uh, Tell us about these energy bars, by the way. So I have these when I cheat and I'm on off meal. So on off, on off um, prepping for a show. So basically these are great though. They're not going to be like a candy bar. They're healthier, mm -hmm. um, but they'll get you some nutrients in instead of starving. Okay. And can anyone get them on supermarkets? Yeah, you or? can get it at USN or oh. at Healthy U. Yeah. Thank you so much, Farah. And then I actually wanted to give you Oh my Three gosh. passes for a one month membership at F45, which is a gym I'm also involved in. This is amazing. It's um, actually a fitness studio um, from Australia. Mm -hmm. And it's 45 minutes of workouts. And basically, um, it's a combination of cardio uh, and also a little bit of weightlifting and mobility. And 45 minutes, you're in and out. It's in Lavington. Mm -hmm. So again, um, some, some compliments for you there and try amazing. it out a week. Thank you so much. Pass, yeah. See you at the gym. Thank you for having on me Monday. on the show. Thank you so much, Farah, and thank you 